So in this video, I've got another 3 js script that I'm going to be sharing with you. And that's going to power these 3D models right here in Elementor in WordPress. This robot walking right over here is not a GIF. It is not a video. It's not a picture. It's an actual 3D model being rendered in real time. This is going to take your website designs into a whole other level. If you don't like the look of this, how about we change the scene to a bakery? Here in the bakery one, you can see that we have this model of this loaf turning around and it really is something very unique and special. Or how about you are making a website for someone who's selling shoes? So if we scroll down just a little bit more on this page, here's a high heel model being generated in real time. So you definitely can use this on pretty much any type of customer. And finally, if we scroll down even more, here is this 3D model spinning around for this fancy dress costume website header right over here. And on this particular model, I'm going to show you something extra. This particular model, if we click on it and we drag it around, you can see that we can actually move this model in real time. So I'm going to give you both codes, the one to actually control the model with the mouse if you want to, and the one that just spins around like this. In the options of the script, you can switch off that auto rotate or you can make it faster or slower. I gave you a whole bunch of different control variables so you can really hone in on whatever model that you want to use. You're also going to have control for all the different type of lighting. You can control its color, intensity. You can even switch it off if you want. So I have simplified the script as much as I can. And yes, this does work in mobile. It's not exactly responsive. There is one extra variable that you just have to play with in mobile. And all that does is makes the model bigger or smaller, depending on that particular screen size and your design. I couldn't make absolutely everything automated because the scripts are generally catered to specific models. So the way that I built this script is that you can actually use any model and then just do slight tweaks for that individual model. Now this does not do as big of a page impact as you think it does. I built this script asynchronously. So what that means is it offloads all the dev and the rendering away from the main thread. So you don't have to worry about your page taking too long to upload because the script already handles that for you. So let's go and build this in Elementor. Very easy to do. It's just a lot of copy paste and it'll only take you a couple of minutes. So here in the Elementor page builder, all we're going to do is set up the scene for the model real quick. And then I'm going to show you how to put the model in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with my main container. I'm going to select this one over here. I'm going to take the padding down to zero. And with the settings of this container, I'm going to say that this is full width. So to make sure that it is 100% width, I'm going to change the min height to VH. I'm going to also going to put this to 100. And then the justify content, I'm going to say put center. And I think we're pretty much good to go there. Then under style, I'm going to choose a background. So I'm going to click over here. I'm going to select this one over here that I want to use as my background. I say select. I'm going to change the settings real quick. So under position, I'm going to put center center. The attachment, I can put fixed if I want to. Repeat, I say none. And display size, I say cover. Now in this container, I'm going to have a left and right column. So to do that, I'll just go in and put in two containers. So here's the container, drag it across, and then say duplicate. Now I do want these things as columns, so I'm just going to go to the main container, go to layout, and then just make sure the direction is horizontal. Now that we have that in place, on the left-hand side, what I want to do is I'm just going to have an example heading and some text over there. So I'm going to click on this container here, and what I'm going to start off with is I'm going to say it's style, I'm going to say that it's going to have a background color of black and I'm just going to give it a transparency of to about a 35%. Now, if you don't know exactly where 35 is, you can just click on this RGBA and surprisingly, I actually got it on 35 exactly. So then you can just drag the slider across and then you can see that this number over here will be that percentage. Now that we have that in place, I'm going to go quickly get a heading, put that across, and I'm going to put a text editor as well. Okay, so let me just go and change the settings a bit over here. The text, all I'm going to do is put it into white and I'm going to say center. Now then the heading, I'm going to do the same. So I'm going to go to style, click white for the color and say center. Now I don't want it right on the top there, so I'm going to click on this container. 
and I'm going to go to its layout and I'm going to say center. Now on the right hand side is where I'm going to place this model. So all I need to house the model is an HTML widget and that's it. So I'm going to click on this plus sign. I'm going to say HTML. Here's a widget. Click and drag it across into the right position and just say let go. This as well in the container. I'm going to go into its settings and I'm just going to say center. And that's as much as we need to do for this web page. So in here and out is all going to be the fun stuff and that's going to be the model. Now in the description of this video, there's going to be a link to a reference page on my website. So let's just head over there now real quick. Here's that reference page. If we scroll down, here's everything we're going to need to make this model work on that web page. The first thing we're going to need is going to be a plugin that's going to allow us to upload that type of file into WordPress. By default, WordPress is very limited in the type of files that allow you to upload. And this plugin is going to take care of that just for the 3D models. The next button over here is an image placeholder. So while the model is loading, you have an image just there as a placeholder until the model is done uploading and it can be rendered out. The third link is a website where you can go and choose whatever 3D model you would like to use inside your web designs. There are a lot of free ones available. And in this tutorial, we are going to be using a particular model from that website. And the last links is all the different examples that I had shown you here in the beginning of this tutorial, which is all these models here. So I have a whole bunch over there for you to see and try. But in this tutorial, we're using the bread. So if I were you, I would just start downloading that now. So as you click that link, you do have to register for the site. It is free, so you don't have to worry about that. But once you've done that in this particular page, we go down underneath the artist and we just say download 3D model. And what we are looking for is the smallest file type that's a GLB. And that's over here. The smallest one is a 31 megabytes. I'm going to click and download that here. And now our model can busy download while we're going to carry on with the rest of the stuff. So back on my reference page, let's start this off with the very first thing. And that's going to be the plugin that we're going to need to upload that 3D model. If we click here, it's going to take you directly to the WordPress repository. They do have the option that you can download it directly here from this web page, or you can do it in the back end of WordPress. So you can choose either way that you want to go. But the one we're going to be using is this file upload types by WP Forms. Great plugin for what we're going to be using here. And this is the same plugin that I used in the other tutorial of how to put a 3D model as a web page background. Great tutorial, do have a look at it after this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this name real quick and I'll show you how to upload it in WordPress directly. So in the dashboard of your WordPress website, we're going to go into plugins and we're going to say add new. Over here in the search plugins, I'm just going to paste that name and it's going to give us the search results. And this is the one that we're going to install and activate. So obviously just go and click install now and then after that, just click activate. So now that you've activated that plugin, what we're going to do is actually enable the file type. So if we go to settings and we go down to file upload types, so it's going to present us with this screen. Now it won't have the file type by default, very easy to fix. You click on this add your custom file types and right at the bottom, there's going to be this little window over here where we're going to take that downloaded model and we're just going to drop it there just to show what type of file that we want to upload. So here's a 3D model I had just downloaded. All you have to do is click and drag that into this window and let go. Now you can see that it's a GLB file. Everything else is set up for you and click save changes. And now your WordPress website can upload 3D models. And that's the very next step. So we go into media and here in the media library, that very same model, we're going to click and drag into the media library and let go. And we are like 75% there. Now, if we go back into my reference page, if you see over here, the very next thing is the image preloader. You can use this one that I used in this tutorial, or you can use your own. It's completely up to you. And if you do use mine, do the same principle, just go download it and drag it across into your media library and upload it there. So now let's go get that 3JS code that's going to power this whole thing. So if you scroll down to the bottom of this web page, you're going to see this script right over here that takes care of everything. Before we copy it, let me just show you some things that you're going to need. This image title over here, this is going to be that placeholder image that we are going to be using. So while the model is being downloaded by the user, there is a placeholder there so that the whole scene won't be empty. And if we scroll a little bit more, you're going to see this easy to modify settings. The very first variable is going to be the URL of the model that we're going to be using, which is going to be in your media library. Underneath that is the camera settings, lighting and auto rotation. 
Now these are all the settings that the code's going to use and generate everything you need. I made sure they were in the beginning of the script. You don't have to go and look for all those type of settings buried within the code. Now I mentioned that this was not mobile responsive, but mobile friendly. And how that works is here under the camera settings, we have this one over here for desktop that you can see the camera distance. And then we have one for mobile and the code will pick up on what type of screen it's being rendered on. And the mobile, you'd obviously pull the camera a little bit more back because the screen is a bit smaller. And that way you actually cater for the model to always be rendered perfectly for that screen size. Other things that you might want to consider is the type of offsets here on X and Y. So what X is, is left and right of the camera according to where the model is and Y is up and down. So here we have a 0.3 was just to give a small tilt to the model just to showcase that bread being displayed really nicely on that web page. So now you do have these controls so you can really set the camera anywhere you'd like. Underneath that is the lighting. Now I know this sounds complex but believe me this has been simplified as much as I could but still giving you the options to change things. For the lighting we have three different types of lights. We have a front key light, we have a back light and we have the general light of the scene. So here you can see directional light and it's going to give you the color so you can change the color of that light to really suit the scene for you. You have the intensity so you can make it bright or softer. Your ambient light which is the general lighting of the scene again. You can change its color and how bright you want the scene to be. So if you want a dark scene with strong lights you can do that totally or you can switch everything off if you want. But if you do that obviously you're not going to be able to see the model because the room is too dark. So do play around with these settings just to get it perfect for the model that you want to use. And then the third one is that backlight I mentioned. Again, you can play with the color and how strong you want it to be. And then the last settings here is the auto rotation. If you want it on or what type of speed, here is the settings for that. So now you don't have to go and dig through all this code to find all these type of things. It's already right here on the top of the script. So now that I've explained all that, let's get to the top of the script widget and we are just going to say copy. So now if we head back into the Elemental Page Builder, over here in the HTML widget, all we have to do is paste it. So now let's go get the two things that we're going to need. The one is going to be the 3D model and the second one is going to be the image placeholder. So in the media library, there's my image placeholder. I'm going to click on it, copy its URL and in this code under the image right near the top, you're going to see the source. And all we have to do is change the source URL. There we go. Now you can see that it's starting to populate. And then the second thing we're going to need in the media library is the actual model. So over here, I'm going to click the model model, click the URL, and as we scroll down to control variables, the very first one that says model URL, all we have to do is paste it. And that's it. Now if we click publish and we see this in the front end, there's our 3D model, just like I showed you in the beginning. Now again, if you want to change the settings of this, you can do it absolutely. So let me show you that now. If you want to change the settings of this to really fit your style, you already have the settings already available for you. Each model is going to be different. So depending on the model and how they built it, you will have to adjust the camera just a little bit going forward or back, which is your Z axis. I couldn't automate that completely because different people build models differently. But let's go in this tutorial and just show how it looks like changing the camera angles. If we're in the HTML widget here under the settings, if we go down to the offset of Y, you can see that we can start playing around with the camera. So let's raise it up just a little bit. So from 0 0.5, I'm going to put to 0 0.8, click publish. And if we look at the front end, now you can see how the camera has moved up. But if we wanted to make it a bit more closer, because we had moved it up, we can go back into the model and the 0.5, we can bump it down to say a 0.3. Now the amount that you put up or down depends on the model and how it was constructed, obviously. So these numbers, although very small in this model, in other models, you might have to bump it up by a factor of 10, 20, 30 to get the same results. All depends on the model. So underneath the camera controls is going to be the lighting. Lighting on the top of reflective surface like this, there isn't going to make much, too much difference because this particular model doesn't get affected too much by lighting. But here, you can see that there's a front light, the ambient light, and the back light. Now you can play around with these perfectly. You can change the colors which is this right setting over here. So you just put in the hex code right over there. You leave the zero X in. It's the way that the code works. And then you can bring up or bring down the intensity of the lights to really make your model look as good as it can. So the lighting as an example of bread is going to be very different. Now I did mention that I was going to give you the ones where you can actually interact. 
So this very first one over here, this is not going to interact if we click it. But I did show you over here a particular model that you can use to interact with. Do pay attention to this type because although it's very cool to interact, it can interfere with mobile. So just be aware of that. Because in case a user tries to scroll while they're on top of the model, the script is going to think that you want to play around with the model itself. So just be a little bit aware of that and only use it in places that you really want to showcase that type of thing. But in our reference page, if we go past this code over here, there's going to be another set of code. So let me go over here. Here is a second script. This script adds all the control features for the mouse interaction. All the left clicking, that sort of stuff, zooming in and out will be the mouse scroll. Here in the reference page, the second script is the one that has all those controls. The first one is just a standard one without those controls. Again, all of these things are asynchronous, so they're not going to impact the page speed scores that much. They are offloaded away from the main thread. I hope you liked this video. If you did, smash that like button. And if you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing as well. That stuff makes a big difference to a small channel like mine. If you have any suggestions or anything, then just put a comment down below. Let me see what I can do. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.